Drawing your own alebrije is way easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hey, hello, wonderful people! It's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. So the creatures we're going to be drawing in this video are inspired by Mexican art, especially alibrijes. Now I have some family from Mexico and I've always just been completely amazed and basically purely in love with these characters or the fact that they're just so colorful and vibrant. I just love them so much. And since today is my birthday, at least the day this video comes out is my birthday, I thought, you know what, let's celebrate with some really fun, bright animal characters. Let's draw some alibrijes together. And really quickly, without making this video a whole art history video, especially because I don't want to pretend I'm an expert in this subject, but there are two types of alibrijes. One is from Mexico City, it is kind of the original one, they were made with papimashi and they would combine multiple different animals together, so for example you would get, I don't know, like a, like a rabbit with horns and butterfly wings or something like that. And the other type is from Oaxaca, it was carved in wood instead of being in papier-mâché and it tend to be more like a, you know, just one animal with a bunch of really colorful patterns on top of it. So keeping that in mind, you can create something you want, you can either just use a straight up animal or you can combine a bunch and create your own little creature. Now in this video, I'm going to be using an app called Procreate, but you can follow along using pretty much any digital art software. As long as you have layers, you'll be good to go. And we're all going to start by doing the same thing, no matter the type of creature you want to draw, we're all going to start by creating a new canvas. Now for reference, these are the dimensions that I will be using, it is literally just the size of the iPad screen. But make sure that you pick a canvas size that works with your own project requirement. And if you're not exactly sure, I have a video in which I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in order to pick a canvas size. So it will be linked in the description below if you want to check it out. And once you have your canvas, we're simply going to start by creating a sketch. So go ahead and create a new canvas or a new layer, sorry, and rename it to sketch. Now for the sketch, you can use literally any color you want because we're not going to see the sketch in the final result. I'm just going to go with gray. And in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different brushes for Procreate. One is going to be a free brush that just comes with the app and is going to allow you to follow along the tutorial just fine. And the other brush is going to be a brush that comes with my Ultimate Illustration Bundle, which is going to allow you to save some time and get just more professional results. So if you want to check it out, it will be linked in the description below as well. And there's always a special promo code just for the YouTube people. But again, don't worry, it is not essential. You can follow along without them. So for the sketch, you can use either in the sketching panel, the HP pencil, again, that comes with Procreate. If you have the ultimate illustration brushes, just go ahead and pick the sketching brush. Now in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to draw the base for a rabbit, but you can also go ahead and watch any of my other animal drawing videos, so like the cat, the dog, the otter, the bear, the birds, whatever you want. Do the sketch from that video, I will link them all in the description below as well, and then come back to this one to kind of draw the rest of the alibrijes. But if you want to draw the rabbit with me, we're going to start by drawing three circles for the bulk of the body. So it's going to look like a, a snowman on the side. The first circle is going to be the biggest one, it's going to be for the hind leg, then you're going to have a second one slightly smaller for the top of the body, and then a third one a little bit smaller than the second one for the head. So something like this. And if you're new on this channel, here we are very loose and not super precise with our sketch, so don't worry about, you know, having a bunch of lines, that is totally fine. The next thing you're going to do is connect the back of the head with the back of the hind leg, as well as the front of the body with the front of the hind leg, so something a little bit like this. And then you're just going to sketch the back foot, which is just going to be kind of a, a rounded rectangle. But again, there's no need to be super precise here. We just want to kind of map out the base sketch and then later we're going to find our line. So for the front legs, we're just going to draw two little ovals like this that get a little bit thicker towards the bottom for the paws. And at the back, we're going to draw another oval that it is going to be the tail. We're also going to thicken up the face a little bit, so just kind of adding a little bit more bulk on it in the front and maybe kind of shaping the top of the head a little bit more like a bean, so having kind of an indent in it. 
and uh, in my case i did not have enough room so feel free to use the arrow tool to just kind of reposition and resize your rabbit so that you have enough room to draw the ears because their ears are really important and especially with alebrijes you kind of want to exaggerate the features a little bit so you want to make sure that the ears are pretty big and i kind of like to have them being pointy a little bit more straight in kind of the center and then the outside of the ear a little bit more rounded so that's my personal preference and for the eye i like putting it kind of in line with the ear and making a very very big round nose and at this point we're going to do what i call finding our line so we're just going to refine the sketch a little bit before adding the color and to do that you might want to flip your sketch so using the arrow tool you can just click flip horizontal and that's going to kind of give you a fresher eye on what you've drawn so instead of leaving your your illustration for a little bit and coming back to it later you can just flip it and it's going to help you kind of see everything just just better and you're going to be able to see what doesn't work quite as well and what seems out of place and just kind of correct it that way that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this step here we're just going to kind of go over with our pencil pressing either stronger on the um, on the screen if you have pressure sensitivity otherwise you can just go back and pick a darker gray and you're just going to go over the line and picking which one you like out of all the sketch lines that you've drawn and doing this when sketching meaning drawing a bunch of lines and then finding our line is a really really good habit to take instead of trying to get like a perfect sketch from the start if you just draw really really loosely you're going to have illustrations that have just so much more movement they're going to be much more fluid and much more interesting to look at in the end and you're also going to be finding shapes that you're not necessarily expecting if you are just kind of trying to get one shape uh perfect from the start so yeah just draw a bunch of line when you're sketching go ahead explore and then when you're kind of happy with the rough <laughs> rough sketch go back and kind of pick which lines and which shapes you want to go with and once you're done with that you can just flip your illustrations back using the arrow tool and clicking flip horizontal again now depending on the type of alibrije you want to create you can go ahead here at this point and add some horns you can add one two three four how many horns you want or no horns at all you can also add some little wings so for wings, what I personally like to do is just draw kind of a, a broken line like this and then draw two semi-circle on the bottom like this. So it's a really easy way to sketch a wing and then you can kind of flesh it out by uh, thickening the top, something like this. But again, this is a sketch. We don't need to be precise. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of the rule here on this channel. Sketches are meant to be rough and quick and loose and fun and not difficult. So you can add whichever other kind of animal parts you want on the arubrije, explore that, and once you're done, we're going to move on to adding the color. So one of the main things about alibrijes is they're super bright and colorful. So I'm going to teach you how to create your own color palette so that you can have your favorite color be the feature on your alibrije. To do that, especially if you're in Procreate, um, there's a really great tool called the Palette Tool. Otherwise, you can just kind of draw it on your, um, you can create a layer and just draw the colors on there. Otherwise, just go ahead and create a new palette. Make sure it is set as default and you can rename it to Alibrije if you want. If not, you can just leave it as untitled. That is totally fine. And we're going to start by picking the main color. So you can use either your favorite color or just a color that you really like. I'm going to go with a super bright kind of tealish blue almost um, but again you want to make sure that it is really quite vibrant and once you've picked it you can either go ahead and put it in your palette if you have procreate otherwise like I was saying you can just kind of draw it next to your characters so that you kind of keep it safe there and you're gonna make a lighter version of it and add it to your palette as well now make sure that you select the main color back and I'm going to use the harmony tool in procreate if you don't have procreate you can eyeball it that is totally fine so you can see here you're gonna have the color wheel coming up and you're gonna have a bunch of options at the top like complementary, complementary, analogous, triadic, tetradic, all of those which basically Procreate is just going to be suggesting you colors that are automatically going to work really well with the color you picked. I personally like to start with split complementary and just kind of clicking on the color adding them in my color palette always going back to my main blue and just kind of using that from my base and then you can kind of experiment and pick different color from other combinations i like to go with the 
normal complementary color, which is going to be just straight across on the color wheel, and then kind of playing with analogous um, and picking color that is very similar to my main color for my background. So once you have around five main colors, you can go back in your classic view and just kind of add a little bit more variety. So I like to have, I know I'm gonna want to have a darker background, so I'm gonna make my color that I picked for the background quite dark and then just kind of pick the other ones and get either darker versions or more saturated versions, basically just adding a little bit more uh, variety, like I was saying in the color palette, making sure that I'm not changing the hue. So I just want to move around and make the saturation and brightness different. I don't want to make the hue different, otherwise it's not necessarily going to work well as a um, coherent palette. Once you have your palette, you can go ahead and set your background to the color you picked. I recommend using a fairly dark color, so here I'm just going with this kind of royal blue. And at this point, you might want to change the blending mode of your sketch to multiply and lower the opacity of it until you can just barely see your sketch. In Procreate, to change the blending mode, you just click on the little end that is next to the check mark. You're then going to create a new layer, put it below the sketch, and you're going to rename this layer to Base. On this layer, what we want to do is basically just create a silhouette of our character. So we're going to go and pick a solid brush you can either use in the airbrushing panel uh, right here, <laughs> the hard brush. If you're following my watercolor tutorials, make sure that you bring the opacity back up to 100%. Otherwise, you can pick the um, base round brush from the illustration bundle. Or if you're using another art software, just pick pretty much the basicest. Basic S, that's not a word, <laughs> the most basic brush you can find, just like a solid round brush. And all you're going to do here is you're going to outline your character, making sure that all the lines are connected and that there's no hole in between, and also making sure that you're very loose in your lines. You want the silhouette to be as smooth as it can be. And it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this part in the video, please go ahead and comment with which base animal you're using for your alibrije. So in my case, I would be commenting rabbit. And the secret password thing is just so great. It gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys. But the best thing about it is you guys know me, but I just don't know you. And whenever you leave a comment, I get to see your name, sometimes even your face. And it's just really super cool to see the wonderful creative community that we're building here on this channel. So just go ahead and comment with which kind of base animal you're using for your alibrije and we'll keep on going. And basically the next thing you're going to do once you're done kind of outlining your animal is just fill in the shape. So at this point you should have a basic silhouette of your animal and we're going to kind of map out the secondary color. So for that what I'm going to do is create a new layer and we're going to apply it as a clipping mask. So just tapping on the layer, selecting clipping mask in the menu and we're also going to rename it to whichever secondary color we're going for. So in my case I'm going to be going with orange. And honestly, you can pick whichever color you have from your color palette. That's the beauty of it. Everything is going to work at this point. So I'm going with orange, but you can go with whichever color you want. And here, all we're doing is we're just going to select different parts of our animal and filling it in so that we have kind of different color blocks. And since we've activated the clipping mask, you're going to see everything you draw on this new layer is going to stay within the base shape. So that is really, really, really helpful. You don't have to worry about staying within the line. You can just kind of roughly color in and then fill in your shapes. So here we don't want to have too many details of like patterns and everything. You just want to kind of map out the main block of colors. And one reason we're drawing it on a separate layer is so that we can move the elements around. For example, this circle, I don't like the placement of it. So I'm just going to use the selection tool, set it to freehand and just kind of draw a selection around my circle. And then with the arrow tool, I'm going to be able to move it and place it where I want it to be. So that way you can really experiment with different color blocking selections and areas and just kind of move your stuff around until you have a basic color blocking that you like. And you can copy exactly what I'm doing here if you want, but I really encourage you to kind of try and do some, I don't want to say patterns, because like I was saying, the patterns are going to be later, but some um, shapes <laughs> that are yours and that are original so that your alibrije feels like you and not just like me. 
And we're gonna kind of repeat this step with a secondary color as well. In my case, it's gonna be the red. And I know that the red is going to be mostly underneath the orange. So I'm gonna create my new layer below the orange layer. It is also going to be a clipping mask, very important, don't forget. And I'm gonna rename it red because my color is red, but you can rename it to whichever color yours is going to be. And it's gonna be the exact same technique here. You're just going to outline your main color blocks and then you're gonna fill them in so that you can have your third, Terrestry? Is that the word in English? <laughs> the third color, basically. So take all the time you need here. Feel free to pause the video and we're going to meet at the next step to kind of shade the character before starting to add all the details and pattern to really make it feel like an alibrije. So for our shading, we're going to create a new layer above the kind of secondary and tertiary, <laughs> this is so hard to say, uh, color layer. It is also going to be a clipping mask and we're going to change the blending mode of this layer to linear burn. And for now, we're going to put the opacity at 50% or something like that, but you can always tweak it later. You might want to rename it to shadow. I forgot I'm going to do it later, but you might want to do it now. And for your shadows, I recommend you go with kind of a, a bluish, purplish, gray color. Um, I just think it, it has a little bit more life than just going in straight up with gray. And for the pencil, you can use either the 6B pencil from the sketching panel or if you have the illustration brushes, go ahead and pick the basic texture brush. You might also want to go back and lower the opacity of your sketch a little bit just to make sure that we don't confuse the sketch with the actual shadows that we're going to be drawing. So until you can really, really just barely see it and then making sure you are on your shadows layer, we're going to start, well, <laughs> shading. So here the shading, we're going to do it in a very simple way. We're just going to basically shade what is kind of behind other elements. So in my case here, the wings are a really good example. You're just going to kind of shade the wing that is in the back. And I'm going to show you the technique to do it in a few seconds, but basically you're kind of just you know filling in the area so when you fill in a surface you want to avoid doing a movement that is kind of a zigzag like this you want to try and do more of a like loops like this obviously you're going to be doing your loops in a much more conde condensed fashion but that way when you kind of cover your surface you're going to get a much more even coverage it's just going to look better in general and you might need a little bit of practice before the movement becomes natural, but it is totally okay and it is worth it. So you can see here, I'm just kind of shading the shadow. <laughs> I'm shading the shadow. I'm shading the area that would be kind of darker because the wing is on top of the back. But basically, you want to add shadows whenever there is either an element behind another, so like the wings and the ears, or when there's an overlap, like here, when the head is on top of the body, you kind of want to create the shadow that would be cast by the head on the body. So do that then you're gonna do probably the kind of the legs in the back maybe the belly as well um, depending on the animal and the kind of the thickness of the legs you might get some shadows there as well so again here we're not honestly trying to get something super realistic with the shadows we just kind of want to put some emphasis um, between the different elements so helping separate the elements by adding shadows more than kind of creating realistic shadows and you can see here like i was saying i just remembered to rename my layer so if you have not done it yet just rename this layer to shadows and then we're going to create a new one above everything it is also going to be clipping mask and this one is going to be for the lights so go ahead and rename it lights right away and the blending mode of this one is going to be add now add is a really powerful blending mode so you might want to lower the opacity quite a lot i like to put it at 20 percent or something like that and then kind of go and tweak it later for your lights you might want to use a super super bright yellowish color to make it feel like it's the sun um but you could also go with a bright blue or bright other color depending on your background but i just like to go with a bright um yellow like i was saying and with the same brush all we're doing here again this is not necessarily going to be realistic but we're going to kind of outline some parts of our character so we're going to start by outlining the tops of the top of the head the top of the back and then kind of the front of the character so the belly the front of the legs the front of the foot Again, we're kind of just wanting to put more emphasis whenever there is a separate body part that appears to help separate them. It's not about, you know, creating realistic shading and lights. It's just more about adding a little bit of a 3D feel 
by separating the elements. So here I'm outlining the top of the wings, the bottom of the wings as well, and soon I'm gonna do the ears. And you can really get a feel for it yourself. Again, you can copy what I'm doing if you want, but this kind of, um, you know, highlighting technique helps really your character pop from the background and you're going to get a feel for what you need to outline or uh, highlight <laughs> the more you do it. It's just going to become more natural to you. But if it doesn't, um, if it is not natural yet, just go ahead and do exactly what I'm doing and you're going to be fine. Okay, so we're gonna start bringing everything together, starting by drawing the eyes and the nose. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer above the lights, above the shadows, above everything. Rename it to <laughs> eyes plus nose. I know I'm, I'm really um, original here. And the blending mode is gonna stay to normal. Now you're gonna pick a very dark gray, but not quite black, otherwise we won't be able to add more shadows later. And you're gonna pick either the 6B pencil or the outline brush from the illustration bundle. And you can probably guess it, you're just going to draw the eye with a solid um, solid color. So you can outline the eye, then fill it in either by drawing it yourself or using the autofill function. And you're going to do the exact same thing for the nose. And we're going to add the lights directly on this eye and nose layer. And to do it, we're going to activate alpha lock. So you can just either swipe with two fingers toward the right on your layer or double tap on the layer to activate it manually. And basically now everything we draw on this layer is going to stay within the shape that we already created. So you can go ahead and pick a super light gray and kind of outline your nose without having to worry about getting out of the line. I also kind of like adding some extra highlights, so just two little ovals like this. And you're also going to add an extra light on your eye. I like adding it on the top right like this. And once you have your nose and your eyes, we're actually going to move on to adding the outlines because that was the title of this chapter. So for the outlines, you can just create a new layer above everything. Again, rename it to outlines. <laughs> no surprise here. I realized I wrote out, uh, outlines, but it worked. So <laughs> we're good with that. And for now, we're just going to draw the outlines in one solid color. And later I'm going to show you a trick to kind of recolor your outlines really easily so that it matches the different sections that we have on the eyelid. But okay. And for the brush, you can stay with the same one that you had. So either the 6B pencil or the outline brush. And yeah, just pick whichever color for now. As long as you see it, it really doesn't matter because we're going to be recoloring the outlines later. And here there's really not that much to say, but that's not true. I mean, when you're doing outline, it's really, really important to be super loose and quite quick. So you can see here, I'm not kind of drawing one little section, then erasing and redrawing it again. If I'm not happy with my line, I just undo and then start over again. If you see that you're really struggling getting smooth lines, it might be a good idea for you to kind of do a warm up before doing your outlines. I mean, it's always a good idea to do a warm up before you draw. And even if you're not, you know, planning on drawing one day, but you still want to improve, doing a really quick warm up is a great way to just kind of get your hands used to the movement of drawing and working on stuff like your hand eye coordination, which is going to help you get what is in your brain down on the piece of paper. So I've created a really quick warm up that you can follow. It is only nine minutes and I will link it in the description below. Of course, it's free. It's just on YouTube. Um, and I'm personally <laughs> I'm doing it for 30 days in a row right now and kind of challenging myself to do it. And the results have just been really great. I mean, you can see here I'm doing my outlines and I'm barely redoing it and doing and if you've watched more of my tutorials in the past you can <laughs> like you know usually i undo and redo quite a lot but here it's pretty much just kind of like okay i'm doing it and this is just really because i've been doing so many more warm-ups and my arms are just kind of used to doing straight smooth lines so yeah just kind of do your outlines take all the time you need and feel free to pause the video here to again <laughs> <laughs> take all the time you need and we're gonna meet at the next step which is going to be starting to add the patterns and the details which is going to make your alibrije become an alibrije okay guys so the hardest part is behind us now we're just gonna have fun and add a bunch of patterns so to do that go ahead and create a new layer above your base layer it is automatically got to be a clipping mask and you can rename it to 
blue patterns or whichever color you use for your base. Now, in terms of pattern, there are so many different things that you can draw for your alebrije. I've kind of drawn a few examples here just for fun. You have like little blobs, spots, lines, spirals, targets, so many different patterns that you can mix and match and you can invent your own. Um, so here really it's all about having fun. It's kind of like, you know, mandalas, how you're just trying to kind of fill in the space with different little lines and different little shapes. This is kind of what we're doing here. We're filling in our surface with patterns. So for my base here, I'm just gonna go with what I call the little blobs. And you're just going to cover the entire main color with pretty much the same pattern. So here I'm coloring my blue, like I was saying with little blobs, which is really just what it sounds like. Um, basic little round shapes and in terms of brushes i'm sticking with the same brush that i was using before so the outline brush i just like that it has a little bit of um um like squareness <laughs> to it which makes my blob not perfectly round so you can stick with that as well or you can use um, any other brush of your choice if you're using the free brushes from procreate just stick with the 6b pencil it is probably your best bet in terms of having really nice texture but also kind of you know some sort of precision that is going to allow you to draw little patterns like this and I like to think of this pattern stage a little bit like a meditation. You know, it is going to take you a little bit of time here. I sped up my uh, my <laughs> sketching at 200%, otherwise this video would last too long. <laughs> it is already a pretty long video. Oh, by the way, guys, do you like longer videos or shorter videos or like medium video? What is the optimal length for a video for you? for this channel. I'm always wondering, I'm always scared that my videos are gonna be too long and that you're not gonna like it. So please let me know in the comments. Seriously, I'm really always wondering about that. But yeah, basically this step is probably gonna take you, you know, a few minutes. So put on some good music, grab a cup of tea, maybe even some chocolate if you're feeling crazy. And um, yeah, just kind of cover your surface with your basic pattern. And then we're gonna move on and add some maybe more intricate patterns for the secondary and tertiary. <laughs> I'll get it by the end of the video. The um, tertiary color, the other color. <laughs> so once you're done with your main pattern, you can go ahead and play with opacity so that you get a blending that you like. And at this stage, you probably want to hide your sketch all together just so you really get a good feel for what your drawing is looking like. You can also kind of go ahead and merge your layers by squishing them with two fingers in Procreate if you have, you know, limited number of layers that you can use. I know in my case I'm not going to be going over the limit, so I'm just going to keep them separate. That way I can change the colors later if I want to. So we're going to kind of do the same thing on the other colors. I'm going to go with the red. But the red, if we create a clipping mask on top of it, it is only going to stick within the base color. It is not going to stay within the red color. So that is not going to necessarily help us. So what we want to do here is go ahead, create a new layer above the red, apply it as a clipping mask, but we're also going to hold two fingers on the red layer, which is going to select the content of the red layer. Then on the layer that we created on top of the red layer, we're going to tap on that layer and select mask. It is going to create a layer mask on that new layer that, by the way, we're going to rename to red pattern or whichever other color you want. And by creating a layer mask, now everything that we draw on this red pattern layer is not only going to stay within the base shape, but also the red shape. Whew. If that was a little bit confusing, that is fine. You can just, you know, create a normal clipping mask, forget about the masks, um, <laughs> and just kind of be a bit careful with your pattern on this. And if you want to learn more about masks in general, if you're fairly new to digital art, or if you just never really learned about masks, I have a video in which I explain everything you need to know about masks, which kind of might help make this little bunch of information more understandable. So I will link that video in the description below as well. And here all I went and did was add some little stripes, so nothing complicated. And then I merged both the mask and the layer together just to kind of apply the mask on the layer. And we're going to be doing the same thing with the orange layer. So this is your chance to kind of watch the process again. So create a new layer above the orange layer. It is automatically going to be a clipping mask. Then hold two fingers on the orange layer, tap on the new layer and select 
mask. Then you're going to rename this new layer to orange pattern and making sure that you have this layer selected, not the layer mask, you're going to be able to go ahead and add your pattern. So here I'm going to start with just a lighter version of my orange, almost a cream color, but you can really do whatever you want. Here on this pattern, I mean, if you want to copy what I'm doing, that is fine again. You're always totally allowed to do that. That's the point of tutorials. But I highly encourage you kind of just take an inspiration in what I'm doing. Sorry, can you hear my rabbit? He's trying to dig a hole in the floor. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Yeah, I highly encourage you to just kind of take inspiration in what I'm doing and kind of do it in your own way. So for example, here on the ears, I'm drawing these little lines, but you can draw spirals, you can draw the little targets or something totally different. You just want to fill in the area with patterns. It doesn't need to be anything specific. You can draw whichever kind of pattern that you want. One cool thing about Procreate that I want to show you though is you have the ability to create perfect circles. So to do that, you just kind of draw a <laughs> rough circle with your, your pencil and then you hold your pencil on the screen and with a second finger, you go ahead and tap. So you draw a circle, you hold your pencil and then tap with another finger and it's going to create, as you can see here, a perfect circle. And since we're drawing everything on separate layers again, one of the reasons for that is so that we can move everything and that's exactly what you can do here. You can use your selection tool and the arrow tools to just kind of reposition everything until everything is exactly where you want it to be. Especially when you're kind of drawing circles, it is really hard to put them exactly where you want them. So this is a really helpful tool for that. Another pattern that you can draw is kind of a like sun almost. So I'm going to draw mine with a darker version of my orange. I just kind of split the circle in four and then in four again, so something like that. And then you can just kind of draw your little triangles um, using the guides. So, the, I mean, again, the patterns you can draw are, there are infinite possibilities in combination. And this should be fun. You should not be thinking about what you're doing really here. Um, you can use your color palette that is already pre-made. You did all the heavy lifting earlier in the video. Now you're just kind of doodling, honestly. Remember when you were in like math class or something like that and you were just filling in the pages of your notebook? You're doing the same thing here. You're just filling in the space, but it's going to be a colorful, bright animal in the end as a result, as opposed to <laughs> a piece of paper that is filled with both, you know, math formulas and a bunch of random doodles. So I think this case, the result is going to be much cooler, but the process is pretty much the same, which I know sounds crazy. Believe me, if you're able to switch your brain off here and just enjoy the process and let your brain chill and your hand take over you're gonna get such a cool result in the end. It's gonna look much more fluid and natural. So I'm gonna speed up the video here, but keep it rolling so that you can still take inspiration on what I'm doing if you want. But I really, like I was saying earlier, encourage you to do your own thing and just experiment and have fun with the patterns. So I'm gonna stop talking, let you do your thing. You can either pause the video here or let it rolling. And once you're ready, you're just gonna move on to the next step. So you can either use the chapters in the video description or move on like straight up in the video itself. And the next step is basically going to be adding all the details and changing the color of our outlines.
Okay, we're almost done. Let's really finish this up and make this look super good and professional. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some outlines to our details. So go ahead and create a new layer below the outlines, but above everything else and rename it to pattern details, pattern lines, <laughs> whatever you want. Now this step is optional. If you like to have your patterns without any outlines, you can keep them that way, but I kind of like to make them a little bit more defined. And all you're going to be doing here is pretty much the same thing as we did for the regular outlines. So just picking one color, whatever it is, picking the outline brush or the 6B pencil and outlining all of your patterns. Again, here I'm going to speed up the video and just stop talking and let you do it on your own if you want to do it. Otherwise, you can just skip ahead in the video. I'm going to add a, um, a timestamp so that you can skip ahead. But yeah, seriously, I mean, I just said it, but all you're doing here is outlining if you want your pattern with the same color and we're going to fix that color later and kind of make it change depending on the color of the pattern. But for now, don't worry about that. Just create your outlines and you can also add some extra little details on this step. Um, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to stop talking and let you do it and let you focus. Okay, so now that we have all our outlines and pattern outlines, this is starting to come together really, really well, but the colors of the outlines especially are a little bit off. So to kind of correct that, you can activate off a lock on your outline layer by swiping it towards the right with two fingers or activating it manually by tapping on a layer and selecting off a lock in the menu. Now you can go ahead and color pick the color of one of your sections you want to use, make it a little bit darker and pick a basic brush like the hard brush from the airbrushing panel or the base round brush from the illustration bundle if I'm able to select it. There we go. And now everything that we're going to draw on this outline layer is going to stay within the outline that we've drawn at first. So that way basically you can just kind of go over and recolor all of your outlines by again color picking the color you want to use, making it kind of darker and just yeah changing your outlines. So here I'm going with my burnt orange around all the sections that are, you know, my bright orange, so my secondary color, making sure I didn't miss any. And super simple, as you can see here, this is just a really efficient way of recoloring outlines because it would have been much harder and would have taken so much more time and the outlines would have been really choppy if we try to kind of switch to color while we were actually drawing the outlines. So you're just going to repeat this exact same technique, so color picking your outline um, or your, your color section and then making it darker to kind of recolor your outline and you're going to do that for all the different sections that you have on your outlines. I feel like I've been saying outlines like 10 billion times by now, but <laughs> this is kind of the theme of this section, I guess. So here I did it with my cream color on the wings and kind of on the um, the paws. This is the paws for a rabbit. I guess it's the foot. Yeah, it's the foot. Um, so the wings and the foot. 
And now I'm going in with a dark red for the belly and the tail. And not forgetting the nose and the eyes, here you can go ahead with your straight up black, which is the reason why we went ahead with kind of a really dark charcoal gray first, is that so that we can have actual black outlines here. And we're gonna do the same thing on your pattern lines um, layer as well. So swiping it towards the right with two finger to activate alpha lock or activating it manually. And I mean, you got you, you get the point now. You you know the gist. Um, <laughs> just go ahead and color pick your base color, make it darker, and just kind of recolor your pattern lines as well. Here you might want to experiment because you know with your patterns you're gonna get multiple colors that kind of touch each other. So you might want to you know, experiment and see which color you want to change and which color you want to use um, in which circumstances. There's no rule, there's no real, you know, there's no good or bad answer here. It is really just gonna be, you know, trial and error. So take all the time you need to do this. It should not take too long. This is a fairly quick technique, but still take all the time you need, pause the video, and then we're gonna come back to really finish this piece up. And if you have anything you need to change on the actual lines themselves, make sure that you deactivate alpha lock so that you can erase or draw, otherwise you might have issues with that. But if you want to recolor, make sure that you always reactivate alpha lock. And once you're happy with the coloring of your lines, we're going to just group all of our layers because right now it is a hot mess. So you can just swipe your layers towards the right and procreate with one finger and then it's going to select them all. And then you can just go ahead and click group here at the top. And with the arrow, you can collapse your group and you can also rename the group if you want, just so that your file is way more organized. It is just so helpful. So I'm renaming mine to Alebrije. And below this group, if you want, you can go ahead and create a new layer for the drop shadow. So you can set the blending mode to linear burn and again, lowering the opacity around 50%. And I forgot to remind mine, but <laughs> it's going to be renamed to shadows. And just like for the shadow on the character itself, you might want to go with a grayish blue. And you can pick the outline brush or the 6B pencil from the sketching panel. So pretty much the same brush we've been using for quite a while now. And at this point, it might be a good idea to use the arrow tool, set it to uniform and kind of resize and reposition your alibrique so you have, you know, a composition that makes sense. And once you're happy with it, you're going to, oops, <laughs> make sure you are on your shadow layer here. Um, but yeah, you're going to draw an ellipse below your alibrique. You're going to fill this ellipse in with just your, your color and that is going to create your drop shadow. I'm sorry guys, it is getting really, really late and I'm losing it, so hopefully this still makes sense. If not, you know, you can get mad at me in the comments, that's fine, I'll, I'll take it. Honestly, no, don't do that, it's my birthday, I don't, <laughs> I don't want you to be mad, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> and you can use the arrow tool as well to reposition and resize and even distort if you want your shadow so that it is exactly where you want it to be and you can also play with the opacity for it to blend a little bit better with your background. I'm gonna keep it at 50%. And final little thing we're gonna do is create a background pattern as well. So creating a new layer above the shadow but below the alibrije. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna use add again, lower opacity at you know around 10% this time, but you can play around and find pretty much any blending mode you want. And I'm just gonna take the lighter version of my background and create kind of this um, confetti pattern. You know, it's my birthday after all. I wanna celebrate, it's a party. <laughs> so it's pretty much the same pattern that I did in the cake video, so if you remember that. But you can use, again, any kind of pattern that you want. Seriously, all we want here is just kind of make the background a little bit more interesting than just this flat color. And I would really like to see the alibrijes that you guys create. So you can always share whatever you draw on Instagram with me. Just tag me at Genevieve Design Studio. I will also link the uh, account in the description below if you want to check it out. I always love to see what you guys create. If you enjoyed this folk art kind of vibe with a lot of patterns and texture, I highly recommend you check out this video in which I'm going to teach you how to draw a folk art moth or butterfly if you're not into moths, that is totally fine. So give this video a like and then just click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.